Hey, this is Lowe with Soul Harbor, and you are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZWLP Conroe and 106.1 KZCCLP Conroe, and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Good morning. You're listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schistler, the host of the Weekly Business Hour, welcoming you to another version of our show. I'm a Silver Fox advisor and also the founder of One Best Consult. Thank you for taking time to listen to the show today. I think we've got a lot of wonderful content. We've got a great visitor with us in the studio live. So let's get going. Uh, first of all, we all know at this point, I hope, that the Weekly Business Hour is where Montgomery County and businesses now Throughout the world, come to talk about the latest in business news, ideas to improve your business, and to be part of the conversations that can make a real difference in your business. And that's very important to me, that we give you information, facts, that we have guests that inform you and help you build a better, stronger business for you and your families. Uh, I want to mention that the show is sponsored by my firm, One Best Consult, and that's the number one bestconsult.com. I encourage you to go to that website. That's one bestconsult.com. Take a look. This is a place we like to say that you can find common sense business advice. Uh, There's a lot of information on the site. There's newsletters, there's videos, one minute videos, three minute videos, teaching videos. Of course, we have podcasts of all the shows that we put on for the last 12 months. And if you feel at that point, you need a mentor or need an advisor, then reach out to me. I'm available. I have clients literally all over the place that I work with, and I'd be glad to work with you. So I encourage you, visit the site, onebestconsult.com. And I want to remind you at this point as we're getting started that the show is being broadcast on Facebook Live. So if you're a Facebook fan, open up your Facebook, go to the Weekly Business Hour, and you know where the button is. You click it, and you can watch and listen on Facebook Live. Also remember during the course of the show or even after, if you've got a comment, you've got a question about something we're talking about on the air, or just in general, a business question, please send it to me. Use the email onebestconsult at gmail.com. That's onebestconsult at gmail.com. And I'd love to receive your questions. I try to answer them on the air if we receive them during the show or perhaps in the following weeks. At this point, it gets real simple for you as a listener. You just need to sit back grab your pad and pencil, and get ready to take notes as we talk about everything business right here on the Weekly Business Hour. In the heart of our show is our studio guest, and today I'm so pleased that we have a returning guest, Randy Morton, president of Better Bookkeepers, is back to complete her soup to nuts conversation entitled The Financial Documentation Reports That Every Business Needs. Randy, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. Well, I appreciate you taking time. I know you're on your way to Austin uh, the chamber here in Conroe is having their their day in Austin tomorrow, and I mm-hmm. think it's or Montgomery County is, right. uh, to visit with our legislatures. The legislature here in Texas is in session. It's a good time to go visit and let people know what we're thinking and mm-hmm. uh, hope you have a successful trip. Thank you. You were here before, uh, and you started off this series, which is a very important topic about bookkeeping, because uh, good record keeping can make all the difference in the health of a business. I know that because I have clients and Sometimes if there is an Achilles heel, it'll be that record keeping or bookkeeping. It's done poorly or in some cases not done at all, Mm -hmm. or at least not current, uh, which you learn that this time of year, don't you, when they close out the year and they have been doing a good job during the year. They show up with their bag of receipts, (laughs) you know, their to-go bag from Carabas. I have all my receipts from last year, sometimes the last two years. Can you help? Yes, we can. You know, that was the way my grandmother, bless her heart, kept her tax records, and my dad would do her taxes. She actually had a, an old cigar box, mm-hmm. but I can imagine a business. We got a lot more receipts, but it always amazed me that he was patient, flipped out a card table and started laying out the receipts and trying to match up and see what expenses, what was deductible and what's not. So I can't imagine they stand in line at your business with their <laughs> bags. So must be some kind of site. Well, let's do a quick recap because it's been a couple of months since you were on of the things we talked about. Uh, one of the things we talked about on that show was why good record keeping, bookkeeping was so important to businesses. Kind of give us a recap on that. It's so important to know where you are in the day. If, if you don't know where you are, where you stand in your cash flow wise, a lot of times that's because you haven't been doing your bookkeeping. Um, you know, are you up to date on your payables? 
Are you, um, are your customers paying you on time? Are your receivables in line? So it's so all that is part of your bookkeeping, and that's why it's important. You know, you make that point about the receivables. I had a client recently that I typically meet with every couple of weeks, and they had been so busy with new business and doing things that, and they're a small business, that they hadn't been personally as the owner of the business keeping an eye on collections mm-hmm. receivables. And one of the things we do at the end of the month is go over the financials, including the balance sheet and including the receivables. And uh, it was a real eye-opener that caught him flat-footed. And he got a lot of good encouragement from me. And yeah. it took a week or 10 days, but we caught everything up. But uh, he had a lot of money tied up that should have already been paid. Mm-hmm. It happens all the time. Yeah, that's, that's a bad place to be. Another thing we talked about was that all-important balance sheet Mm -hmm. typically gets disregarded by a lot of businesses, small businesses. Why is that so important for the business to keep track of and understand how to read the balance sheet? The balance sheet is ongoing, so it lists your assets as well as the liabilities, but it shows the health of your business because it goes year to year, where your profit and loss statement, um, that income statement, will zero out at the end of the year and start over for the new year. But your balance sheet shows your what is the the health of your business. What does that net look like? That retained earnings. What does that look like? And that's all on your balance sheet. You know, it's kind of like the the income statement is an annual mm-hmm. uh, way, mm-hmm. but the balance sheet is a perpetual. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's funny because I find a lot of clients just don't pay any attention. They don't. I think they don't understand it, but we can go through it, and they, you know, I can teach them a lot bookkeeper should be able to teach them a lot more, but it is a record. And in my opinion, it's, uh, I was taught by my, in my case, my dad, when I was very young, that says, you don't know how your business is doing unless you've got your income and your balance sheet sitting in front of you at the same time. We've had so many people tell us, my business doesn't need a balance sheet. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> if you want to know how healthy it is, you need your balance sheet. You need well, to- even if, it's, if you have a loan, it mm-hmm. tells you what your balance is mm-hmm. on the loan. Mm-hmm. You're not going to find that on the income statement. Not at all. Yeah, and it does get back. And it does create, or or excuse me, it states, it's part of the statement of the value of your business, mm-hmm. uh, regardless of what formula might sell the business, but it is part of the value of mm-hmm. your business. Great information there. The last thing we talked about is uh, starting a new business. Mm-hmm. A lot of folks every day start new businesses. And uh, my question in the conversation, the topic was, uh, what do I need bookkeeping wise to keep it right? You know, to do it right, what kind of tools, processes, starting day one, do I need to get off on the right foot? Day one, you need to make sure that you open that business checking account or the business credit card and not mix those expenses with your personal expenses. Um, so many brand new businesses, they have that passion for their service, their passion for their product, but they have no clue about numbers. So from day one, you should outsource the bookkeeping if you're not a numbers person. Um, Make sure that your EIN is set up, that make sure that all your business documents are in line, and that includes going to the bank and opening those business accounts. Very important. Yeah, I think uh, you you mentioned, if I recall correctly, and I've seen this happen. In fact, I had to give advice to a client since we were last on the air with this conversation that don't run your business out of your personal checking account. Right? That's a bookkeeping nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's a quick way to get audited to, to mm-hmm. push those expenses. And- Every now and then you have to pay for an expense out of your pocket, and there's nothing wrong with that. And then it gets booked properly in the business account, in the business file. So you can document that, you know, you had to pay for this piece of equipment out of your personal funds. And there's nothing wrong with that, but don't make it a habit. Right. And when you document it, do it right away so you don't forget, right? Oh, big time. So what happened back in June? What did I do? Mm -hmm. You know, now that it's time to close the year, time to do my taxes Mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Well, one of the things, the decision you have to make when you start a new business is, do I go out and buy some software or do I go to the cloud and and on a monthly subscription or do I just get a ledger book or about, you know, a spreadsheet? Uh, And typically a lot of folks gravitate towards using something like QuickBooks. And Mm -hmm. I don't always tell a client they need to start. Uh, They can record it manually if they're concerned. Uh, There's some philosophically, I was trained in a way that you did it by pencil, then you transferred it to the computer just to make sure you understood it and you had it all right. But that's another conversation. But QuickBooks is really the the popular software. And I know that you, uh, because of what you do, have come across some traditional mistakes Mm -hmm. that whether it's a new business or a mature business, 
that people make with QuickBooks. Why don't we talk about some of those? Sure. We have several that we, we always seem to bring up with brand new clients and talk about. Um, QuickBooks isn't the only database out there, but it seems to be popular because there's different versions of the QuickBooks. QuickBooks Online, Visit a Desktop, and even within the desktop, like, there's a more robust um, enterprise version that'll help you manage your inventory if you run an inventory in your business. Um, some of the popular ones, I brought a list of mistakes that people make, is they like to use separate QuickBooks files. They want to open a file for their accounts payable and a separate file for their accounts receivable, and they're not understanding why their reporting is messed up. And a lot of things that are behind the scenes is because they have their AP clerk. They don't want to know what AR is doing, and they have their AR staff that they don't want to know what's going on AP side. Um, so that's receivables and payables. And if your database, no matter what it is, cannot specialize your users, then you need a new database. Because within the database, you can say, this user has these permissions, and so you can have one file for all of it. And then your financials at the end of the month are much prettier. Now, everything will come together because it is in that one file. I think people need to hear that because one of the things I find that I feel is a mistake, and I counsel my clients against against it is when you're installing, say, software like QuickBooks and you're not an expert or have a great deal of experience, find someone to help you. Mm -hmm. Because this type of problem about opening separate files on the same business, really, mm -hmm. business operation, and then you find they don't merge together, you don't, everything doesn't balance out, uh, that's, a, that's a mistake that just shouldn't be made. But if you're not willing to seek help, mm -hmm. professional help that knows what they're doing, you're, I mean, you're shooting yourself in the foot from day one. It, Number's going to be wrong. For a small setup fee, small cost up front, you could save yourselves a lot of headache. What are some so, of the other mistakes that you bump into? Um, some of the other ones, especially with the, the newer versions of QuickBooks, you can download that bank activity automatically. Every day when you log in, it grabs the activity from the bank and bring it into the file. Well, a lot of owners don't look at their bank statements. They say, well, it's downloaded. I see the activity in the file you still have to reconcile because with those um, transactions, they may skip a day. They may duplicate the bank activity. So when you're reconciling, it's showing whether or not they're missing or duplicated transactions. So that's very common. People assume, well, the bank downloaded it. It's fine. You know, it's funny you should talk about it because for years I would have clients complain that, well, my QuickBooks balance doesn't match my bank account balance. And sometimes they're off thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. And so people quit depending on the QuickBooks balance. And, but today I find people that whatever's taking place, they're more educated and the software is a little easier. Like say, you can download that balance, then they'll depend on the QuickBooks balance. Or they love the delete button and they delete <laughs> things that have already been reconciled. That can be a nightmare. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't delete. Yeah. The delete button needs a cap on it that you have to take off kind of like a missile firing, button. you got to lift the cap before you hit it. It makes a lot of sense. What else have you found to be a major problem with QuickBooks with folks? Um, the lack of timely data entry. Like you said, oh, if it happened last week, I could probably remember. But if it happened back in September, do you really remember the details of that, maybe the loan set up or loan payments or stuff that came out of your personal? So if you're do it timely and reconcile monthly, then you're more likely to remember what happened. Anything else about QuickBooks you want to warn us about? Um, back it up. Make sure you make a backup, always. You know, a lot of times it'll prompt you, do you want to make a backup? And people think, oh, no, I'm safe. It'll never crash. That's when it's going to crash. Well, that's, that goes without saying with anything done on a computer. Make mm -hmm. sure you have a backup. Well, we're kind of running out of time in our first segment, but I want to uh, ask this final question. Okay, why does somebody, and this seems simple, but give us a profile, if you will, or explain to us someone who at, at some point needs to engage a bookkeeper. I mean, you have people come to you. They probably have gone way beyond that expiration date, if you will. Mm -hmm. But what what, it's, what does it look like when I, my business, I need a bookkeeper? I need to go outside and get a bookkeeper. Give us some well, views. I, I would say day one. I would say as soon as you start business transactions, get a bookkeeper. If you're a numbers person and you can do it, then I would say when it gets to the point of you're not enjoying your business because you're spending too much time paying your bills or too much time um, managing your receivables 
or maybe it's your payroll that's taken up your Friday afternoons. It's time to outsource. Um, but yeah, I would say day one, if as soon as you do your first transaction that's from your business account, seek a bookkeeper, even if it's just for setup and advice, because then we can see when that is becoming unmanageable and we can step in and help. You know, I think that's wonderful advice because what a lot of folks don't, under, don't understand is you put the wrong numbers in to start mm -hmm. and they can continue. And I've had clients several years later that still had some bad numbers and were trying and they were going to spend a lot of money and they knew it was wrong and it made them feel their entire record bookkeeping system was wrong. Mm -hmm. So they had no confidence. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our first break of the day. I hope you'll stay with us. When we come back, we're going to continue the conversation with Randy and we're going to talk about some other things that you need to be aware of as far as challenges that people have in keeping their books. Hopefully, they don't apply to you. So please stay with us. It's all about business on the Weekly Business Hour every Monday at 11 a.m. on Lone Star Community Radio. Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the message line at 936-647-3776 to take your first step into the radio world. From the beginning, the main purpose of the Cooperative Extension Service has been to change human behavior by teaching people how to apply the results of scientific research. By utilizing a holistic, multi-level approach, Extension Family and Community Health Programs encourage health and well-being for everyone, addressing values, concerns, and needs with reliable science-based information. Extension programs help people lead healthier lives. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make their lives better. Not sure who to turn to when you have a problem in your business? Listen to the Weekly Business Hour on Lone Star Community Radio. Hey guys, this is Connor. This is Dick. This is Chris. And we're with the Ticket Stub Podcast every Thursday live at noon on 104.5 and 106.1 FM in the Conroe area. Also, anytime at IRLoneStar.com. You go to IRLoneStar.com backslash TTS. You can find all of our social media. And don't forget, we give away two tickets to the Grand Theater on every show. If you like movies and you like complaining or celebrating anything that has to do with the silver screen, Check out the Ticket Stub podcast and join us every Thursday at noon o'clock on Lone Star Community Radio. Don't miss Lone Star Community Radio on TV and YouTube. Our talk show and music shows are featured on Our City TV, Sudden Link Channel 12, and have their own YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to keep up with posted shows and comment on them below the video. What is homelessness? Have you seen parents struggle to find a job without having transportation or child care? What about the children sleeping in cars with nothing to eat? Families shouldn't have to struggle to survive, and children should not be homeless. Family Promise of Montgomery County serves the needs of homeless families and their children. Learn about ways you can help and learn about partnership opportunities at www.familypromiseofmc.org or call our day center at 936-441-8778. Hey, Montgomery County and online listeners. Thank you so very much for checking out Jazzy Vibes with Soul. What? You haven't done so yet? Well, you've got to tune in. Hi, I am the host of Jazzy Vibes with Soul, Miss C.C. Holmes, and I invite you to check us out every Friday and Saturday from 7 until 9 p.m., where you will get the best in old school R&B and, of course, a little smooth jazz to make it jazzy. So tune in. That's right, tune in every Friday and Saturday right here on Conroe's 104.5 and 106.1 FM or worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. You're listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler, your host, and we're having a soup to nuts conversation today with Randy Morton, the president of Better Bookkeepers. We're talking about financial documentation reports that every business needs. Well, Randy, we were talking about some of the things that uh, people don't do or should do. They start a business, 
Uh, they come in with their bags of receipts, all these kind of, uh, I would assume from your position, kind of a horror story in a nice way. But uh, l- let me ask you this. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you find? I mean, people are not keeping their books correctly. I mean, what is this? What, are the, what is the problem? Why aren't they motivated or why aren't they keeping their books uh, correctly? And what do you try to do to kind of get them back on track and stay focused on it a bit? A lot of times it's they run out of time. You know, their weeks go by and turns into months and they, their intentions are good. They want to reconcile and make sure things are um, up to date. They just run out of time. So that's why it's important to outsource it because then you know it's guaranteed to be completed in a timely manner. Because even when we do the reconciliation, we'll send a list of questions of help us code these things. And owners still take a long time to get those responses back to us. So we have to kind of be the, um, the bad guy to say, you can't have financials until these questions are answered. Um, other, they, just, they just simply run out of time. So you, the biggest thing is I'm running a business and I've got 43 things of my things to do list today, right? Mm-hmm. And bookkeeping it, goes to the bottom. It, it slides <laughs> to the bottom. It's one of the what do they call that? Where we it's just something we don't want to do. And I know I've received advice and training that well, what you don't want to do, you really need to start your day and try to get it done and get it out of the way. Mm-hmm. Feel that sense of accomplishment. I've used that tool over the years; it works. <laughs> uh, but you got to make yourself do it. Mm-hmm. And I know that has to be frustrating for you. And you would think that the business owner and I run into this with clients that. They, they just don't have a sense of the need or the value of that financial statement. Is that what you run into as well? They don't see the need of the value. Um, you know, a lot of brand new clients will not like the pricing that it, that it will cost for outsourcing your bookkeeping. Um, but they don't realize that not doing it at all is more costly. They don't realize the tax savings they may see if you book it properly. Um, so they, they have to weigh the cost versus the value. Well, and you just tied in an important thing is that the taxes, and I know you all don't do taxes, but in reality, that's kind of the end mm-hmm. of the of the end game is that we're doing all this numbers work, right. which should be primarily to let us know how our business is doing. We can make adjustments, so on and so forth, and uh, better grow. But at the end of the day, when you do your taxes, if you haven't done it right, you can lose money mm-hmm. by having to pay taxes that you shouldn't have paid or didn't have to pay if you had done it correctly. And this time of year, people are making adjustments. You know, they're looking at last year's books and they're wanting to adjust maybe some invoices because those invoices are booked to income right away. So they know company ABC isn't going to pay, so they want to adjust that invoice and they don't adjust it properly. They love that. We're back to that delete button. And you need to know how to book those adjustments properly. You know, and something for people that are listening to this and, and have the small business and are willing to admit they have some issues with what we're talking about, that they, they're not doing it, is I have found that when I take my records, any business, and I turn them over to the accountant, the CPA, the tax preparer, that if I've done a good job, it costs me a lot less to mm-hmm. get that return done, right? Mm-hmm. So there's cost savings on that end if we do it right on the front end. People don't realize that a CPA is looking at bottom line numbers. They're looking at the group of numbers, and they're not looking into the weeds that make up that detail unless they see a potential problem. Then they look into the detail. But for the most part, CPAs are so very busy that they want to trust the numbers that you're providing. They'll look over it for obvious issues, but if it's not an obvious issue, they're going to accept the numbers you provide as accurate numbers. And then if it turns out it isn't and you get audited, then, boy, there's even more cost. So... Ladies and gentlemen, there it is, two or three really good reasons that you need to start with a bookkeeper unless you're a numbers person. And uh, there are those out there. I have a client that is that does a real good job. Mm -hmm. Uh, They do over a million dollars in sales, and they use a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. They don't even use a program, Uh, and they have very accurate numbers. So, But they spend a lot of time on it, too, Mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know how they do it because they're very busy. Well, let me ask you this. It's tax time, and, and you and I have talked before. And, you, and we talked on the show the last time, your firm doesn't do taxes. Do you provide any other services in-house other than bookkeeping? Well, bookkeeping is such a wide term. Okay. So we, we do handle your sales tax, maybe or the payroll-related taxes. We use an outsourcing firm with payroll, and they take a lot of those payroll taxes. 
the liability of paying them. Um, but yeah, mostly the sales tax is part of the day-to-day -day bookkeeping. Um, you got to make sure this time of year that you're caught up with those liabilities because if not, that becomes a snowball issue. And the IRS is famous for sending letters about nine months to 18 months later from when a report was due. Um, so bookkeeping, we if someone just needs payables help once a week, we can um, kind of tailor the scope of services to that need. Maybe someone has an in-house person that are doing their invoicing and customer payments, but they just need a second pair of eyes for reconciliations. We'll tailor to that need as well. Now, do you do invoicing? Mm -hmm. If I don't have, say I'm a small business and I want to outsource. I mean, I see it more and more, even larger businesses uh, that do millions in sales, they'll outsource everything. Mm -hmm. So if I have a business and I don't want to send out invoices, what about collections? I mean, where, where, what do you do in that regard on the day-to-day -day business? So for collections, we will give them a list of people they need to contact for their collections, okay. but we won't physically make those calls or emails. But you will send an invoice we if will, I need to invoice someone. Mm -hmm. And we will send second notices or, yeah. you know, the past due notices. Right. Um, we have some clients that we're out at their um, place of business twice a week doing the full scale. We are their accounting department right. and we're doing it all. And we have others that we only work on three hours a month at the end of the month once the statement closes. Right. So it just depends on the need that you have as an owner. Right. Well, like I said, I'm seeing more and more people, even larger businesses, being modeled to outsource administrative services, mm -hmm. which I have a background in and actually ran an outsourcing company to, in, a, in, a, in a sense on this. So that's something for people to be aware of is the invoicing because that's another thing that's a burden on the entrepreneur. Most of them do it late in the evening or on Saturdays or you know, they're, it's not their main business, so they're, but they got to get the invoices out. Or they'll do their invoices in a Word document, and it'll never make it into the file, so you don't know who has paid and who hasn't. You don't have that receivables, um, that, that summary of who is still outstanding. Right. And so we definitely will do it inside your file and make sure that the items are pointed to the income items that need to reflect that income. Now, I will assume, back to my, my original question, that if someone comes to you and you're doing the bookkeeping and maybe the invoicing, some of the other what I call day-to-day -day services, then you don't do the tax return, but I'm sure you've got folks that you would refer people to, mm -hmm. some good referral sources. We work with many CPAs in the Montgomery County area. And so when someone is looking to switch their CPA, we usually give them three names and tell them to talk with all three because it's about your relationship that you're going to build with the CPA and who you feel you can work with the best. Right. That professional mm -hmm. relationship. So, mm -hmm. so important. Well, let me ask you, uh, I'm in business or again, uh, the scenario that I've been in business, I'm mature, uh, business and I'm not happy with my bookkeeper. If I'm starting, I don't have one. What would you tell people are some of the key characteristics or key factors that they need to take into consideration when selecting a bookkeeper? Um, the communication style. If um, the bookkeeper only picks up the phone to call to communicate and will never ever send an email, then you need to make sure you're a phone person. And if the, commu if the bookkeeper has different styles of communication, you need to find that the best way to communicate. Um, you can't, no matter who your bookkeeper is, if you're not wanting to show any of your information, you're like, these are my accounts and they're top secret, then there will never be a bookkeeper that works for you because you need to be able to, to share that documentation, whether it's the loan documentation, um, any type of rental or leasing agreements, your bank account and the full activity in your bank account. But if um, you're not willing to have that open communication, bookkeeping is going to be difficult no matter who you hire. Yeah, it would sound like it'd be hard. If you're mm -hmm. not going to share, then why do you need somebody? Exactly. So then you have in, to do it yourself. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to do it yourself, or you're going to, and, and you're probably going to end up in real trouble either way. Mm -hmm. And whether you do it or not do it, it's going to end up in the same place. That's interesting. Any other key factors or considerations when hiring a bookkeeping firm? Um, I would definitely get references of, of their current clients, former clients, um, not only why they love them, but is there something that can improve on? Because that that feedback is important, especially for our firm. How can we improve? We're always wanting to make sure that we can get better the next day. 
Um, well, you know, you made the point about communication style, mm-hmm. and I think a lot of people miss that in relationships, whether it be a vendor or clients or, and it's one of the things that's in my top 10 that I try to work with clients and make sure uh, I've even seen people that as far as communication, they'll, they'll send, uh, I have a professional client, a uh, professional firm. They, when they onboard a client, do you prefer email, you know, text, whatever, and they have the client check a box mm-hmm. or all of the above so they can make sure to some extent that the client's going to get and see and read. I have a lot of people I won't send an email to today because it gets buried Mm -hmm. because of the way they keep their email system or don't keep it. So it's a text or a phone call. Mm -hmm. We have a handful that prefer the phone. Um, And all we do to back that up is we'll summarize that phone call in an email so that we have it in writing next week if we have to refer back to it. Because in a phone call, you can't refer back to a phone call and really remember that detail. So once the phone call is complete, we summarize that conversation in an email so that it's in writing. Yeah, well, I think in your business, you, or any business, you're going to have to do that. Mm-hmm. That's very important. But again, establishing good communications and making sure that which avenue you determine that you're going to communicate is very, very important. So when you're looking for a bookkeeper, like any professional or anyone, I agree with Randy wholeheartedly. Make sure they are the kind of person that fits with you in the way you like to communicate. Absolutely. Nothing's right, nothing's wrong. Just got to have that good fit, right? Mm-hmm. And That's, we try to meet our, our, once the bookkeeper is assigned, we try to have a face-to-face meeting so you could see the body language and how this person really communicates. And then from there, um, they, they work on building that relationship from that yeah, point on. That's wonderful. Makes a lot of sense. Well, we're running out of time. We're wrapping up. Um, as a book, as a, and I guess the question I have, and I see this time and again, as a business owner, what should be my expectation for my bookkeeper? Just generally, I've hired a bookkeeper. What is it that I should expect from them? You sh- should expect that whatever the arrangement is, that it's um, on time and that you, you have, again, it goes back to communication. Because if you're emailing and not getting any response, then how do you know that your file's being updated? You know, a lot of times we look into a file and we had a um, um, a client that was looking inside the wrong file. It was a very old file, thinking the bookkeeper wasn't doing their job. And after communicating and realizing, oh, y'all are in the new file, not the old file. So I think the expectation should be we need to be on time with our updates, whatever that agreement is. If we say twice a month, once a week, once a quarter even, that it does happen because once the updates are made, you should hear from your bookkeeper and say, your file is now updated. Here are your financials. So it all comes back to communication, in my opinion. The other thing I look for is timeliness, that Mm -hmm. the reports come back to me in a timely fashion. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a big believer personally, and I've had this work for me when I was in business, that if I get the information, accurate information, soon enough, I can use it to change an action or reaction running the business. It's not just history to me. It's mm-hmm. looking for is there trends, there's things happening. And I can't do that if I don't get my if I don't get my monthly back for a month or two months. Right. Then the cow's already out of the barn, so to speak. Budgeting is one thing, but being able to make decisions based on how um, your business is hitting the budget or not hitting the budget is very important. And so timeliness is is up there. Sure. Absolutely. Well, Randy, I can't thank you enough. Thank you for coming back uh, and finishing out our conversation, our soup to nuts conversation. If folks want to get in touch with you and talk about some things we talked about today or perhaps talk to you about your bookkeeping services, what's the best way for them to do that? I would say the best way is to call the office. Elizabeth will be happy to schedule an appointment. It's 832-299-6712. Or you can email me. I'm at rmorton at bbk-tx.com. Well, again, thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope you'll stay with us because when we take our bottom of the hour break, when we come back, I'm going to first recap our visit with Randy and bookkeeping, some of the things that I've seen my clients do and not do. Uh, Then I'm going to, in our Did You Know segment, we're going to look at the idea, does your business need surgery? And then finally, in our One Best Consult Tip of the Week, what do your customers think about your business? Uh, So please stay with us. We'll be right back with you.
turn to when you have a problem in your business? Listen to the Weekly Business Hour on Lone Star Community Radio. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app for your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That is Conroe's FM 104.5-106.1. This is Rick, TRC. Every Tuesday on my show, Afternoons with Lone Star from 3 to 7, I play back-to-back classic rock hits. That's right. I like to call it a two for Tuesday or a three for whatever it is you'd like. Call the request line, 936-647-3776. Or message me on Facebook, Afternoons with Lone Star. Make a music request. That's right. You can do it. Here's what else. Go over to our website, IRLoneStar.com. Get the app on your phone. It's easy. You'll like it. Does your company have needs that can be met by an employee who is dependable, hardworking, enthusiastic, motivated, cooperative, respectful, and punctual? Conroe Independent School District Special Education Department can meet your needs by connecting you with potential employees that have been preparing for a lifetime of employment. We have numerous individuals seeking paid and unpaid work experiences. If your company is interested in seeing how we can meet your business needs, call Conroe ISD Special Education Department to find the best employees for you at 936 909-7671. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question, comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station on IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. Listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture. Are you interested in learning more about preparing quick, healthy, and safe meals for your family? Would you like to spend time with others learning tips and tricks, along with practicing and tasting nutritious food? If so, the On the Road to Healthy Living Mobile Cooking School is for you. Call Amy Ressler at Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service at 936-539-7825 to find a class near you or volunteer to host a class. For those of you who like your partners, your gumbo, and your music salty, well, we're here to help with the music. Julian Shea here, host of Lone Star Country Nights Thursday, your weekly dose of roots and Americana and all the music that makes this part of the country special. We stir in western swing, honky-tonk, zydeco, Texas blues, outlaw country, and put a pinch of red dirt, and then we smoke it over a slow fire. Then listen to the results Thursday nights on Conroe's 104.5 and 106.1 and worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. Remember to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on your computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. Lone Star Community Radio broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. For business ideas and news you can use, join us on the Weekly Business Hour every Monday at 11 a.m. on Lone Star Community Radio. You are listening to the Weekly Business Hour. This is Rick Schisler, your host, and again, thank you for being with us today. Hope you enjoyed our segment with Randy Morton, the president of Better Bookkeepers. Bookkeeping a very, very important part of business, and I think it, it is important because you don't know where your business really is by keeping track of the, if you will, the statistics, then you're going to really get in trouble and you're getting in trouble fast. And too many of us in small business overlook the importance of bookkeeping. So I encourage you to do so. And again, if you have questions about bookkeeping, about your bookkeeping, I would definitely reach out to Randy Morton and the better bookkeeper, bookkeeping folks, because they know what they're doing. Quick, uh, did you know segment, uh, 
does your business need surgery? And the reason I'm bringing it up, if you're watching this show on Facebook Live or some other video presentation, you'll notice that I'm dressed fairly casually today. Uh, that's because when I leave the show, I'm headed in for surgery uh, that takes place and going to be a part of my life, uh, the results for the next few days as I recover. And I started thinking about that over the weekend, the surgery and putting things aside and difficult decision to make, but when you need it, you need it. And the same thing applies to one's business, I believe, that there are times that your business, certain part of your business, uh, most often I hear it about an individual employee. Uh, you need surgery. You need to cut it out. Uh, it's a drastic thing to take sur- to go into surgery, uh, regardless of whether it's an outpatient surgery like mine is today, hopefully, or you're going to be hospitalized for a period of time. But from time to time, we have to face reality. Our business needs surgery, whether it's an individual, whether it's a vendor, whether it's a customer or several individuals or a certain business uh, segment, product, service is not working any longer. And we just need to be willing to stand up, uh, belly up to the bar, whatever you want to call it, and make that, yes, drastic, but very important decision to surgically, if you will, remove with that individual, that part of our business, and move on. Uh, and it's it's hard to do, but it's something that every business typically in its life, particularly those that are growing, because times change, products change, services change, we've got to rearrange, we've got to leave some of the old behind perhaps, it's very hard to do, particularly if you're in a generational business, been in a family for a while, but I encourage you, don't be afraid of the surgery. And I'm saying this to myself today. So when I go in, I want to smile. I want them to do what they need to do because I know on the other end of it, when I recover in a few days, in the next few weeks, I will have a better life. And that is true of your business. Once you commit and perform the surgery done correctly, then your business will be stronger for it. I want to close out today a little bit uh, talking about what customers think of your business. Published a blog last week with the same title, What Do Your Customers Think About Your Business? And I think it's a very important topic. It's one that most businesses make some effort to determine. Uh, We send out surveys. uh, We do things like that that are fairly innocuous. We get information back. uh, Sometimes, you know, less than 1% will return. But there are a lot of other things that go into understanding what your customers are talking about, about your business and what they're saying. And they're very important, obviously, to know what they think even though they're a customer and they're buying products, buying services, sometimes they think things should be a little differently. They think the transaction should be handled a little differently, perhaps simpler. Uh, That's the word I hear a lot. I want it simple today. And I think there's several things we can do, and I want to point these out to you. First, as an owner, are you really listening to your customers? Are you, more importantly, putting yourself in a position to hear customers directly? And in the blog I did, I talked about my grandfather I grew up with and how he positioned himself in his business on a daily basis, part of his routine for a couple hours a day, to listen to the customers as they came to pick up uh, the products and services that he provided in his business. And I learned a lot watching that. Uh, And he wouldn't wait on a customer. Uh, He would direct them to someone else that was there at the counter. He was there to learn who they were so he could build a relationship with them. And two, he was there to listen to what they had to say, their comments about the business, because he would ask them. Secondly, and really important, and this is the one that gets missed most often, is what do your employees do? Are they listening? Are they hearing what the customers are saying? Do they know what their customers are thinking about the business? And the key here is you've got to empower employees, particularly certain employees who do have a chance to communicate email, phone, text, whatever method, with the customer. You have to empower them to be able to respond to what they hear, particularly when it comes to issues or complaints. Can your people that work with you respond to those complaints? Can they resolve them? Or are you going to push the customer into what I call a queue? Uh, This happens on Amazon. You get pushed over here. You got to call this number. You got to leave a message. You got to send an email. You got to And you just, you don't know what's going to eventually happen. It's a process that really needs to be cleaned up. Because what we have to do is we have to talk to the customer. We don't need to avoid that. We need to talk to the customer. And I think many times large companies tend to do the email and whatnot. And that's fine if it's a quick resolution. 
But if you've got an issue with the customer, with an order or something, I recommend you talk to the customer. Three other things I think that are important is information. Do employees have the information they need to give a good answer to basic questions? So that when a question comes their way, do they already have the training and the necessary knowledge to respond? For example, what's the turnaround time on an, on an order? Somebody says, well, I'm ordering this. What's your turnaround time? You'd be surprised how many people, employees, particularly when you go into big box stores, have to go check and find out when that shipment's going to go out so they can respond to the customer. They should already have that information, I contend, at hand. Next thing is listening. Uh, do you listen to your employees? I mean, their feedback about what the customers are saying and thinking about your business oftentimes gets missed. The guy's a delivery driver. He goes out and delivers. He hears things when he delivers. Are you in a position? Do you set a mechanism or a process where you get that feedback? Or are you dependent upon that individual to seek you out? Let me tell you, that more times than not, it's not going to happen. And last but not least, put a process in your business to implement changes. In other words, put something in place that when information comes in, you get that information, it's digested, the people involved, discussion, whatnot takes place, and then implement a change if it's necessary. So do you know what your customers are saying about your business? If you don't, I encourage you to start today and start listening to everyone involved. Well, again, thank you for joining us today. And I'd ask you to please put on your calendar a note to join us next Monday right here on IRLoneStar.com at 11 a.m. Chris Wee is going to join us. He's a commercial insurance agent with the Cook Group, and he's going to be part of our Soup to Nuts conversation about concerning business insurance. Is it enough, and do you have the right coverages? So put it down and join us. And look for the podcast of today's show. It'll be published on Wednesday. It'll be out there on IRLoneStar.com, OneBestConsult.com, Facebook, all over the social media if you need to take a look. And again, stay in touch with what's happening in Montgomery County right here on Lone Star Community Radio. And until next week, as I do, stay engaged and keep your focus on what counts in your business. Thank you.